Hello, this is Compound Interest Stock Guide. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about report card series for Liberty Health Sciences, LHS, and I believe it's like LHSQF or something like that in America. I don't know exactly, sorry. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about it and I'm going to give it a report card score. So stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, hey, don't be shy. Uh, subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. I do truly appreciate it helps more people to see my channel and uh, you know I like talking to more people in this investment community and uh, you know being engaged with people it's really cool so uh, yeah if you're interested uh, you know subscribe leave a comment down below I, I always uh, uh, comment back to people and reply and uh, please give me a thumbs up uh, I want to disclose I'm not a financial advisor this is just for entertainment information purposes do not buy or sell based on anything I talk about buy or sell after you did your own research due diligence and you like the investments you're pursuing yeah so it's uh, snowing out today in uh, Vancouver metro Vancouver area so about about uh, six and a half to seven mil uh, centimeters of snow so that's about like two and a half three three inches so yeah it's interesting haven't gone out today and uh, what else? Uh, yeah, so I'm feeling a little bit better with uh, now my brother of uh, my brother passing away. Uh, moving on with that, but you know, it's gonna take time uh, to deal with everything. But appreciate some of the nice words from everybody in the uh, when I did a kind of like a memory uh, in my video and all that, and some nice posts from people on Twitter as well. So I appreciate everybody. But hey, let's get into this because I know you guys came for the financial report card series. So this is what's up. I'm going to do the chart first. So so I do these lines. Listen, the lines can move around, right? Because this is it can buck the trend, right? So like all of a sudden it could be like, oh, there's a resistance point. And then the Bollinger is going to come down like over here, right? But I just do this to give an idea of the kind of direction that it's going, right? So... Based on this is like okay, it hits this, it's dancing on this. This is the I call this the bullish side of the Bollinger. I don't know if other people call that, but that's what I call it. This is the bearish side of the Bollinger band. So, in my opinion, when you want to get into a trade, you want to wait till it gets to the bull, like the bearish, or you're at the very bottom, and then you kind of wait, and then it say say it's right, right around here, and there's resistance, and it's coming back down or whatever, sell. Now, if it breaks through, like you could always just be like sell here, right? So you buy it, say, say you had like, I don't know, you had like four thousand dollars, right? And this goes up like twenty five percent, right? You take that twenty five, you you got your twenty five percent of profit, and like okay, well, I'm not sure if it's gonna go up or down. Get out of that position now. You wait here. You're like green, red. You're like oh, okay, I don't know. Now it hits this part and it starts coming up. This is like an, um, I think it's like an hourly or it's, no, it's a weekly. It has a weekly, right? So you can do daily as well to get a better perception as well and you kind of get um, more a micro um, vision as far as what you're looking at at the chart. But this is um, more far uh, out as far as where it's going to go. So every candle represents a one week. Now you get up here. So you're in the bull, uh, bullish part, right? Now you hit the top of here. That's the time to sell because 9% of the time it comes out of the Bollinger, right? I mean, sure, it can go up a little bit, go up, but it's like, why? Why are you going to risk? Because it's going to go back down, right? It's going to go back down, like it come back down here, right? So then you could be like, okay, I'm waiting, 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 and then it hits here. You're like, okay, go back here. Boom, 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 boom. There you sell, right? So you're like, okay, 56 cents. You say you had like um, 10,000 shares, right? So that's like 5,600, 5,700 bucks, right? So then you're like 10,000 shares. You're like, okay, go up here. That's like, sell it right here. That's like 7,000. You get your 1,300 or so profit, and then you move on, right? Because you're like, okay, it hits the top of the Bollinger Band. I want to get out. Now, if it comes back down here and it doesn't break through, but you have like a, a tight stop loss, right? You'd be like a mental stop loss. You're like, okay, it says 60, right? right when you're looking on the uh, candlesticks and then it's like okay it goes down here down here you're out you're out okay because it can go back down to 36 cents and you're holding the bag you don't want to hold the bag so get the f out so anyways that's just my ideas for liberty health sciences excuse me 
if you do own the stock or you're thinking about owning the stock or just for ideas as in general for other stocks, right? Because I love the Bollinger Bands. I'm be I love it. I love it so much because I think if you can really see the Bollinger Bands, I mean, yeah, they're not 100% perfect, but you get an, a better idea. It's kind of scary. Like it takes us some like watching because you're like, oh shit, it's outside the Bollinger Bands. Like I got to get out. Um, and it's like, okay, you're like, this is a daily, I believe, uh, this is daily, one daily. So you're like, okay. And then it keeps riding and it's like out, but then it keeps going up, keeps going up, keeps going up, keeps going up, keeps going up. Right. So at that point, you just kind of got to be like wary when it starts coming back down to here. Right. Cause when it starts getting out of the, out of the bull side of the, of the Bollinger Band and get into the bear side of the Bollinger Band, that's like, that's where you're going to be like in danger, right? So, it's just an idea, right? I mean, you can do anything you want to do, right? But I think it's a good idea to kind of follow the bull side of the Bollinger, of the Bollinger Bands. And then, so it's like, okay, now it's coming back down to the bearish. It's like, right, right when it gets down to here, like, okay, I'm out. Fuck this, I'm out. So, then you're like, okay, it's okay to buy in the bearish side of the Bollinger Bands. That's nothing. That's that's fine. Then you buy it here. You're like, okay, boom, 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 boom. And this is a doji right here. Or this would be the best time to buy. Red to a, to a doji to a green candle, right? Now it hits this resistance right here. You're like right here because you know there's going to be a lot of resistance here. You're selling it right here, okay? So you get your 55 cents. You sell it at 68, 62 cents or whatever. That's like 13, 14% gains. That's great on like on like a thousand dollars. That's one hundred thirty dollars minus commissions on like five thousand. You know that's like that's a good amount of money, right? Ten percent gains, right? That's a daily move, right? So you always want to watch for these dojis on stocks. I love candlesticks. I mean, the more you get, the more you watch them, the better you're gonna bet be. Um, they can really change when you're watching them in live motion, but that's what. Um, it takes a lot of time, but I mean, I, I recommend watching this. You know, if you're a longer swing trader, use the daily. If you're a day trader, use 15, 30 hour, five hour C because it's really going to show you where the channel you're in, right? Because if it's like, oh, 55 cents to like 71 cents, right? So yeah, it's going to go out there maybe, but it's going to come back in. So right here, it's like it went down here. It's like okay maybe time to get back in when it gets back into the bollinger band so anyways i hope you, that helps you out for charting ideas as far as to become a better chartist um as far as investing in these companies and trading so i hope that really helps you guys uh in your investing in your trading careers to make more money because i want the community to make more money i don't want people to lose money i want people to make lots of money and to just become better so now we're gonna change uh, gears to uh, how many minutes are we in here? Eight minutes. So uh, we're gonna do the financial report cards for Liberty Health Sciences. Okay, maybe maybe I'll do a service. I'll do what what is uh, Liberty Health on the OTC. LHSIF. There you go. LHSIF. All right. Um, all right. So let's get to the financials. Okay. So they got $28 million in cash, 28.5, right? Inventory about 38 million, which, listen, I don't think inventory is a great thing to have necessarily on the balance sheet. Um, but in Florida, it's not a bad thing at all because uh, product is selling very good in Florida right so but in Canada when the company's got like 130 million that's like can be a scary thing especially when the company has it in oils or you know just things that aren't selling like there's there's companies that got a lot of product like cannabis got a lot of strains that just don't sell well they're the worst sellers in the BC cannabis store so I predict that all throughout Canada they're just not selling very well because they're not a good strain the product's not very good the price isn't good for what you're getting. So people are finding better values, right? And it's a marketplace, right? The market, 
you know, figures out what they want to have. Yeah, they they like good quality stuff, but they also like fair price quality and all that. So, you know, people want to get good values, right? That's why I think that the Oxley products with the vapes and the edibles are doing very well and they haven't been around that long, right? People have just picked on and realized that it's a good product, you know, and uh, not as much money. So, all right, so let's go. So biological assets of 7.47 so that is uh like clones and stuff like that when they're in um just getting ready to be uh flowers i believe or they're just uh so the inventory is like it's it's in package or it's like in big bags or whatever but this is just on its way to being uh inventory and other receivables so they say i have 75 million 75.8 million in assets okay so their assets are worth like they got about a 400 million market cap so their assets are worth somewhere in like 18 cents per share right so not that great that's their total current assets now they have other ones they got deposits investments uh capital assets so i i don't have time to go into the capital assets i'm sure it should be somewhat legit um, but I don't think that's like, I don't know if it's that great, the intangible or the capital assets, but it's the, you know, it's, I don't know what it is. I, I'll have to look into it further if I'm, if I decide to buy uh Liberty health science, but this, I don't have enough time to get into that. Now with their liabilities, they got 21.65 million. They got accounts payable, 7.5 million convertible notes payable. So it really matters when these notes are payable, right? Because then they're going to convert to shares and that'll be dilution, right? So something to think about, deferred tax liability. So when I say it's something to think about, it's like, it's like get you people can get all, all wrapped up in the hype, right? But sometimes the hype is when all the companies like selling their shares or something like that. Or institutions are selling or big big money selling their shares, right? So when you're getting in the hype, this is the things that you have to look into, right? So lease liability, 18.5 million. Deferred tax liability, total liabilities of 55.9, right? So now they got share capital, warrant reserve, contributed surplus, and deficit. So 141 million in shareholder equity and liabilities uh 197 so liabilities suck i mean really they do just sucks so i don't know why i don't know why they do that like total liabilities and shareholder equity like they should they should just do like shareholder equity minus liabilities or whatever but um maybe they do it somewhere else down here so now let's get into the financials their actual uh revenues so 16.1 million and i've already done the math for you guys so you're welcome uh the cost of goods sold was 6.3 million so 9.8 million pretty much by like 800 i don't know 38 dollars i guess uh shy of 9.8 million so that is really it's a 60.8 percent margins which is very good i'm very happy with those margins very happy um uh this is a gross profit of 9.8 million so i think that's great uh realize fair value amounts um including the cost of inventory sold i'm not really sure what that means um including the cost of inventory so realize fair value amount so i don't know why they have to add that to the gross profit like i don't know it just seems kind of kind of funky like it doesn't really add up in my opinion and this is the the growth of the biological assets which i'm okay with adding them but at the same time you kind of got to be like oh adjusted operational income so what they did for adjusted operational income based on new cannabis ventures is like 2.4 million or something so i kind of look at it like it what it is is a gross profit minus this is 2.4 million right but then they add this gross profit and so like this can co uh, help their net income next quarter. But I don't really count it at the same standard, right? Like as far as giving them a report card score, I'm more concerned with actually out the door. 
but I'm not unhappy with it adding to their um, inventory, right? Like I like it that they have inventory in Florida. So um, I'm just looking at it at like a whole picture, right? Because inventory doesn't mean it will necessarily get sold, right? And what if they price it at like 11 or $12 a gram and then say like they can't sell it and they have to lower it to like 8 or $9 or they just don't sell it all, right? Like that's going to be a hit. So that could be like a, a big loss on a future quarter, which I don't really want to see, right? If if I'm investing in this company, I'm not investing in this company, but I'm just saying though, that's things to look at. So but then when you look at total other non-operating, you're talking about exchange loss, changes in fair value, uh, interest expense, right? So then when you look at that, right? Realistically, they didn't really have an, um, any like, adjusted operational income in my opinion because i think that should be counted as like interest expense should be counted right i mean because say you got like five million dollars every quarter in an interest expense well then are you really profitable sure like yeah you can be before that but i don't know it's like it's like an ebitda thing right that's why ebitda can be kind of uh not a real um like a standard to use because it's like earnings before interest tax depreciation assets right so depreciation or just the interest expenses right so some companies got a lot of debt and they got a lot of interest expenses so net income so they say 21 and current income tax and they say net income current income tax yeah they got to pay 14 million so now it's net income down to 6.8 so now, if you take away the inventory, right, then they're like, they're actually at a loss, right? So that's really boosting them, right? The whole fact that they got the the inventory added, right? Without that, they're at a loss straight up. But um, yeah, 0 0.2 cents EP, uh, EPS, earnings per share. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think I'm going to give them a uh, B plus. Uh, they're I mean, I guess they kind of deserve an A minus, but then if you look at the whole scheme of the whole deal, that it's not really an A minus in a lot of senses. But you know, there's there's um there's reasons why that they could be an A A minus. Um, but yeah, that's my opinion. I'm gonna give them uh, that's ah, hard. Kind of should give them an A minus, but I don't really want to. So you know, it's up to you whether you uh, take it as as a B plus or an A minus. I mean, I'm I'm giving them a B plus, but in um, in some people's uh, Keller, they could think it's an A minus. I guess so. That's what I'm gonna give it for Liberty Health Sciences, LHS and LHSIF in America. Thank you for watching. Thank you for learning with me uh, about Liberty Health Sciences. If you are interested in this company, you can look at the, their website at libertyhealthsciences.com. Go to investors financials slash dash investors dash in financials. Uh, you, then you can get it yourself. You can look at other financials as well. I'm, I'm kind of just doing this for Sheldon Snow. I didn't want to do it to begin with just because I wasn't feeling too well in, over the last week. Um, well, it hasn't been a week. It's been like three, four days since my brother passed away. But regardless, I'm doing this and I'm moving on in my life. And uh, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Keep compounding your info. Listen to my lingo. And uh, shaka ka I'm out.